Anderson Presbyterian Church on this not quite as windy morning. So yesterday we had quite a, quite a storm going through and a number of power outages as well. But I welcome you today to our worship service on two special Sundays, all in one. It is Transfiguration of the Lord Sunday, of which I will be focusing on during the children's message. And the second one, of course, is Valentine's Day, which will be kind of the focus of the message this morning. So that gives me a good excuse to wear red. So a few announcements. The session of our church will be meeting on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, so let's be in prayer for them, for them to do what they are called to do as the elders of our church. Also, our Zoom Bible study meets every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. We'd love to have you join us. We will be studying Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11 this week. Uh, look for an email announcement regarding the Zoom announcement with the Zoom link as well. Also, we have our Bible reading calendars and the These Days devotionals in the narthex. Feel free to pick those up. It's a great way of guiding us as we read the Bible and read devotions that focus our life on Christ. Thanks to Karen Fallon, who will soon be moving, uh, for being our lay leader this morning. Um, it's uh, kind of bittersweet that she will be moving, but uh, we're excited for her and her future life down in the Phoenix area. And thanks for all that are helping out with the service, whether they're greeters, temperature takers, organists, whoever. And uh, we just thank you all for uh, what you do for us. So with that, I'll turn it over to Karen as our lay leader. Let us worship God. Please stand. Please stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> the Lord has called us here this day. May he reveal his purposes for us. Let us open our hearts to receive God's good news and make us ready to serve him. Come, let us worship God. Let us sing our praises to the Almighty One. Heavenly Father, the darkness of winter has been our companion. Now the days are lengthening. Bring your light to us that we may see your glory and may work for you, offering hope and peace to this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join now in coming to him forever.
Well, it's now hum our children's song, Jesus Loves Me, the first verse as we prepare for the children's message this morning.
It's a special day that we focus on not only Jesus' transfiguration, but also on love. We ask you, Lord, to guide us in all things. We ask you, Lord, to bless these offerings and tithes that we give to you. May they be multiplied by the fish and loaves that were multiplied when you fed the 5,000 and the 4,000. May they be used to multiply the gospel in what we do here at this church and all that we do throughout the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to this time of corporate prayer, let's keep in mind all those that are suffering from not only COVID-19, but other ailments as well, other health issues. Maybe it's a relational issue as well. Let's keep all of those in their thoughts and prayers. Keep our church in our thoughts. We have a session meeting on Tuesday for guidance for them as we move forward. As also, we have the Bible study later in the week. Be mindful of our city and our state as we're changing and new regulations coming about. And pray for a quick ending of uh, the COVID-19. And other things as well. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you that we're able to get together, worship you. And part of worshiping you, Lord, is praying together as the body of Christ. We ask you, Lord, to be with our congregation for their health, safety, those in assisted living and at home. Some are basically stuck in their rooms to be very lonely, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to be with them and to know that you're with them. Comfort them. That even when they're by themselves, they aren't by themselves because you're there with them. Be with all those that need a special healing, no matter what it is. So we know, Lord, that you are the great physician. Touch their lives, their minds, their hearts. We pray, Lord, that the scope of 19 will be eradicated and that we can be become closer to what was normal. But Lord, we also ask you to calm our hearts and comfort us when loved ones have passed as well. Lord, we pray for our church, for the session meeting on Tuesday evening and Bible study on Thursday morning. Be with the other ministries, the food bank, and just guide us, Lord, as we gradually will be opening up and in your timing to more activities. Lord, we pray for our city and state as the regulations are gradually starting to lift a little bit. We pray, Lord, for jobs and safety, for the economy, and all things that are necessary for our life. But most important, Lord, to, that you be with us all and to, to guide us. Be also, Lord, with our country. Be with our leaders, that they seek you and what is best for our country in all ways. Pray, Lord, for all those that are affected by natural and unnatural disasters of different kinds. We pray for the persecuted church, that they may be comforted. And Lord, we pray for all of us. Help us, Lord, to learn to love. As Jesus said in the first and our second commandment, in essence, to love you with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray, Lord, that you hear us. As we always do, we have a time of silence that we lift our prayers of confession to you. We ask you, Lord, to hear us. Even though we're not worthy to be heard, we know, Lord, that you're so faithful to hear us. Now as we have a moment, let us lift our prayers of confession to God.
Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers, for forgiving us, drawing us closer to you and therefore closer to each other. We thank you, Lord, for your abundant love for us. And now as we continue in our prayers, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now focus on this wonderful song that was recorded for us by Karen Fallon and Prince Cell. It's a wonderful hymn that can mean so much to each of us. It is In the Garden.
that was a, a pleasure uh, near and dear to my heart and uh, turned out fine, didn't it? It's okay. That's great. Um, that's part of the bittersweet thing about leaving is that uh, things like this are what I remember, well, what I remember and what I'd like to do. So I thank you. Thank to read Psalm 136, verses 1 through 9, and then verses 23 to 26. Oh, go, go give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for he is steadfast, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders for his steadfast love, love endures forever? Who by understanding made the heavens for his steadfast love endures forever? Who spread out the earth on the waters for his steadfast love endures forever? Who made the great lights for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Verse 23. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever, who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. God bless the reading of this word. Thank you, Kara, and thank you for all you've done in so many ways here at our church. Yes. The New Testament reading for today is from Paul's letter, first letter as we call it, to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. This is a familiar passage to many of us, but there's some things I know that we can all learn from this incredible passage, from this incredible letter. Paul wrote, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy god or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly. 
but then you will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the words of our Lord endure forever. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for these fascinating and encouraging and wonderful words from Psalm 136, 1 Corinthians 13. Open our hearts to what you have for us today, and Lord, if there's anything that hinders us from hearing what you have for us, we ask you, Lord, to take it. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. There was a pastor by the name of Peter Miller that lived during the time of the American Revolutionary War. He was a good friend of George Washington. There was another man by the name of Michael Whitman who did all they could to oppose and humiliate the good pastor. But one day, Whitman was arrested for treason and sentenced to die. The pastor, Peter Miller, traveled from his hometown on foot the 70 miles from his home to Philadelphia to speak to his good friend, George Washington, to play for the life of the traitor. When he got there, he explained what, what he wanted and George Washington replied, no, Peter, I cannot grant you the life of your friend. The preacher exclaimed, my friend? He is not my friend. He is my worst enemy. What? cried Washington. You walked 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? That was the matter in a completely different light. I'll grant the pardon. And he did. Peter Miller took Michael Whitman back home. No longer an enemy, but a friend. Love. What is it? What is love? Love is sometimes called the universal language. It's a language that is understood by all people. Today we celebrate Valentine's Day. It's a day we traditionally show our love to someone dear to us. It's also the day that I remember as a kid that we would share Valentine cards and greetings with those in our classes, but probably not so much today with the COVID, etc. But today I want to share a few quotes about love. From the 5th century BC Greek philosopher Euripides, he wrote, friends show their love in times of trouble, not in happiness. From Lucius Aeneas Seneca, a 1st century AD Roman statesman, we have, if you wish to be loved, love. St. Augustine, one of the early church fathers said, since love grows within you, so beauty grows. For love is a beauty of the soul. John Calvin, the 16th century theologian said, whatever a person may be like, we must love them because we love God. The 19th century Roman novelist Dostoevsky is quoted as saying, to love someone means to see him as God intended him. Henry Drummond, the 19th century Scottish evangelist said, to love abundantly is to live abundantly, and to love forever is to live forever. Amy Carmack, a Christian missionary to China said, you can always give without loving, but you can never love 
without giving. And finally, Martin Luther King Jr. reinforced what the pastor did in my first story by writing, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. These are some very powerful statements. They can touch our hearts, touch our lives, and can make us think about the importance of love. But none of these compare to the love that Karen read this morning from Psalm 136, or what I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. First of all, the psalm tells us to give thanks to God for the many things he has done. And after each one of the statements, the psalmist wrote, for his steadfast love endures forever. Think of that. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's love for us is not a fleeting thing. It's not temporary. It's not conditional on us loving him. Throughout the ages, God's love for us remains the same. This psalm is also the inspiration for our praise hum forever this morning. I encourage you when you get home to read the entire psalm. Yes, God's steadfast love endures forever. 1 Corinthians 13 again has been called the love chapter of the Bible. It tells us what love is not and what love is. The Corinthians church had a misunderstanding of what was important as a Christian. They were into receiving gifts from God and into showing others what they had received. In chapter 12, Paul wanted the, uh, the Christians in Corinth to be informed about how to handle the different gifts they were given. He told them that there were many different gifts and all were to be used to glorify God. Also, regardless of which gift or gifts they were given, that of wisdom, healing, prophecy, various kinds of tongues, etc., they were to understand they were activated by one and the same Spirit, who allotted to each one individually as he chose. He went on to stress that none of these gifts are more important than the others. At the end of chapter 12, Paul wrote, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. What is this more excellent way? This more excellent way is the way of love. So let's take a look at verses 4 through 7 of chapter 13 in 1 Corinthians to find the answers to that question and to answer the questions, love, what is it? First, love is patient. Jesus Christ has to be the best example of being patient. Think about it. He had to be really upset at times with his disciples. Sometimes they, factually, they, they just didn't get it. Peter denied three times even knowing who Jesus was. Yet Jesus came to him after his resurrection and forgave Peter. We likewise are to be patient with each other, with those in our families, our co-workers, and with those in our community. Yes, love is patient. Love is kind. Being kind doesn't cost anything. It's as easy to go around with a smile as it is to go around with a frown. Kindness is a big step in the Christian aim to overcome evil with good. Maybe to call someone, to say a kind word or cheer, of cheer or comfort, to convey friendliness by a, a fist bump or elbow bump since we can't shake hands anymore with COVID. These are just a few ways of showing kindness to someone else. 
Then we have love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. All of these are examples of being selfish, being self-focused. When we are focusing on ourselves, we are not showing love toward others. Love does not insist on its own way. Our way isn't always the best way. We don't always know the best thing to do. We don't have all the answers. We need to listen to what others have to say, what ideas they have. As Paul Tillich, the German theologian wrote, the first duty of love is to listen. When we listen to someone else, we sometimes become wise. And being willing to listen to someone else, we are showing that we care. We are showing love to that person. Sometimes we need to follow other people's advice and not insist on our own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. Are you irritable when someone does something that really bothers you? Or do you resent someone else's situation in life? Do you wish you could be more like them? John Wesley wrote, Love cannot be upset over God's giving any good gift to someone else. If people who love have received God's blessings, they are not to be resentful when others receive the same benefits. then love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Have you ever been glad when someone you disagree with was caught doing something wrong or illegal? Do you think, well, they deserve it. Well, we shouldn't be that way. We should never rejoice when someone has done something terrible. We should pray for them, show them God's love, even when it is against our human nature to do so. Remember, we are to rejoice in the truth. And love bears all things. It is hard to sit back and bear all things. But believing that God is in control, we can continue to be patient even when life is challenging. Love believes all things. Believing all things does not mean that we are to be gullible or unre unrealistic. Even when things are not looking good, love has a way of looking to the future. When we follow Christ, our future is guaranteed in God's hands. Love hopes all things. In the last verse of this wonderful chapter, Paul wrote, and now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Love hopes all things. When we focus our lives on loving God and loving others, there is hope. And finally, love endures all things. The picture of endures all things is much more than putting up with everything. Love allows us to remain true in the most adverse circumstances and even to transform the situation by showing love to others. We see this many times when we read about Christians that are persecuted for their faith. We are to ask God to intervene when things aren't as we think He would want them to be. <coughs> In his commentary, Kenneth Chapin suggests that as we go through these four verses, we should substitute the word Christ every time the word love appears or is referred to. So listen to this passage with this idea. Christ is patient. Christ is kind. Christ is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Christ does not insist on his own way. Christ is not irritable or resentful. Christ does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Christ bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Definitely something we can think about and to be thankful for. 
But then, as we take this idea one step further, substitute your name every time love appears or is referred to in these four verses. Look to the screens in the front of the sanctuary and each time an underline appears, put your name. That will make love personal. This is a real challenge. So let's do this together. Lee is patient. You can put your name in our on the lines. Lee is kind. Lee is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Lee does not insist on his own way. Lee is not irritable or resentful. Lee does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Lee bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. When I do this, I am greatly challenged in so, so many ways. I agree wholeheartedly with the following statement. When I hold this list of the characteristics of love up to, up before my life like a mirror, I am immediately shaken by the many ways in which I fall short of the perfect love that Christ modeled for me. But I also know that nothing will be more important to my life than letting God perfect the gift of love in me. Not in some abstract theological way, but by helping me learn to truly love every person as God loves me. Love is shown very strongly in this following illustration. William Gladstone, in announcing the death of Princess Alice to the House of Commons, told a very touching story. The son of the princess was ill with diphtheria. His younger sister had recently died from the disease. When the princess told her son about his sister's death, his reaction was even worse than she had anticipated. At first, he refused to believe it. As he sat up crying, Alice broke her rule about physical contact with the ill and gave her son a kiss. She got diphtheria and some days thereafter went to be forever with the Lord. Real love forgets self. Real love knows no danger. Real love doesn't count the cost. So on this Valentine's Day, may we center our lives on God's love. At the end of every verse in Psalm 136, we read, His steadfast love endures forever. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, that love never ends. God's love for us is eternal. When we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are given the promise that we will be given eternal life with Him. There is no better time than during this season of love to give our lives to our loving God. He is the author of love. He is the giver of love. How? through giving the Son for our sin. If you're already a child of God, may you recommit yourself to Him, to recommit your life to be one that shows God's love to others. So love, what is it? That, my friends, is love. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to love. To love others the way that you love us. Give us the strength to go from this place. Loving others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now stand as we are able and sing well, hum, our final hum. They'll know we are Christians. I have a
Thank you. 